welcome back to my channel. Today I'm coming to y'all with a video all about how to get past anxiety. So I've experienced anxiety from time to time throughout my life and I realized the closer that I became with God, the more the enemy attacked me with anxiety. And to me, anxiety is my mind being overwhelmed with negative thoughts, scary thoughts, um, fearful thoughts of the future, um, just being overwhelmed. The enemy will plant a lie in my head and it will just go, 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 go. And it's one of those things where I can't think my way out of it. I can't rationalize my way out of it. And it's a way that the enemy tries to keep us trapped. Because if we're caught up in anxiety, caught up in fear, caught up in worry, we cannot do the purpose that God has for us. It is a trick in a scheme of the enemy. I know that anxiety is something that people usually don't talk about. I have a feeling that a lot of people experience it, but a lot of people don't talk about it. And I'm just here to let y'all know that I go through it and it can be very frightening, but I'm just here to let y'all know that God is the way, Jesus is the way, the Holy Spirit is the way to get past anxiety. Not to deal with anxiety, how to cope with anxiety, but how to get past anxiety. So this is something that I've experienced, something that I've dealt with, something that I still deal with. Um, but these are things that really, really help me. And in Jesus' name, anyone who experiences anxiety does not have to live with that for the rest of their life. In Jesus' name, I pray that God frees anybody who is struggling with anxiety and can feel peace and joy and things of that nature. So I have notes on my phone, so I'm going to be reading them on here. So 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 11 really talks about anxiety and worry and it kind of gives a, a step by step on how to combat it and how to work past it. So I'm going to read it to y'all first and then after that I'm going to go step by step and break it down to a way that we can apply it to our lives. So it starts off with, so humble yourselves under the mighty power of God and at the right time he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about you. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you. And he will place you on a firm foundation. All power to him forever. Amen. So I'm just going to break it down step by step. Verse 6 says, So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time he will lift you up in honor. So to me, this means humble ourselves, turn to God. I think it means just knowing that, hey, I can't think myself out of anxiety. Hey, I can't rationalize myself out of worry and fear for the future. So just humble ourselves under the mighty power of God. And it just goes to show that the power God has, it's mighty. God is able to move you through what you're dealing with. But first, we have to acknowledge that we need God's power to get through it and not our own power. You can't talk yourself through it. You can't walk yourself out of it. We need to humble ourselves and turn to God. So that's the first step. Verse 7 says, Give all your worries and cares to God, for He cares about you. And to me, this is just saying, like, cast your cares up to God, give your burdens to God, and let Him handle it. We live in a time where we're supposed to deal with everything on our own. We're supposed to work our way through it, talk our way out of it. But it's just saying, give your cares to God. He cares about you. We do not have to carry the burden on our own. We just give it to God. First, we humble ourselves and recognize that we need God. Secondly, we give it to God. So that could look like praying and saying, God, right now I'm dealing with some thoughts in my mind and they just feel like they're plaguing me. I don't know what to do with it, but God, I know that you are mighty and powerful. So in Jesus' name, I just give my anxiety and my emotions to you. You might not see a change immediately, but I'm telling y'all, if you give it to God, he will help you. So verse 8 says, stay alert. 
Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. So anxiousness, worry, doubt, fear, hopelessness, loneliness, all the things that can plague our minds, those are things from the devil. And the Bible clearly says that. Sometimes it might be hard to identify and say, okay, the devil's attacking me. Sometimes it'll feel like, okay, I'm just losing my mind or I'm stressing out or what's wrong with me. But I'm telling y'all, the enemy is real. He's a master of manipulation. He wants you to think that what you're experiencing is all you, that, that there's nothing that can be done and that it's all you. He's a master of manipulation. He hides in those areas. But the Bible is saying, stay alert. And another translation says, be of sober mind. To me, that just means just know, enemies out there, don't be deceived, stay alert. The enemy, and then it goes to say, the devil, very clear. Our enemy, as Christians, is the devil. He is roaming around like a lion, looking for someone to devour. So, that doesn't mean that he can devour everybody. He's looking for someone to devour. In the Bible, it says that the enemy attacks at an opportune time. So maybe you just got out of a relationship, maybe you're heartbroken, maybe you're overwhelmed, stressed out at work, overwhelmed by school, you know, you're having financial difficulties and, and you're, you take your mind off of God. That is when he's gonna attack you. Maybe you've made it through the whole day, you haven't prayed to God, you haven't acknowledged God, and you haven't really seek God, but you've kind of made it through the day on your own strength that's when he will attack you. So we have to get to a point where we are proactively seeking God and not just reactively seeking God. We have to seek God when everything's good, not just when things are bad, because the enemy is looking for someone to devour. He's not gonna attack you as hard when you're in the presence of God, but as soon as you step out of that light and you kind of lose sight of God, that's when he's like, okay, I got her or I got him or whatever and the Bible is saying be alert stay alert the enemy is out there and he's not taking any days off thankfully we have strength and power through Jesus Christ God equips us we're not just in the world just hoping for the best like God gives us strength but we have to humble ourselves we have to give our situation to him and be alert have find some peace in knowing that you're not the only one we all are struggling with it to some degree verse 9 says stand firm against him and be strong in your faith remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are so it's saying be strong be strong in 2nd Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 um, this is a New King James Version. It says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. So when the enemy tries to give you a spirit of fear, make you feel afraid, make you feel uncomfortable, uneasy, overwhelmed, remember this, God has not given us a spirit of fear. So if we have a spirit of fear, recognize, hey, this didn't come from God. So he does not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So if you're feeling powerless, that's a good indication that you need to tap back into God. If you're feeling hopeless, turn back to God. And if you're not filled with love, turn back to God. It's just giving us instructions on what to do. Be strong. Our strength comes from God. So if we're feeling weak, turn back to God. And like I said, it says remember that all your families of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. The enemy wants us to be isolated. He wants us to feel like we're the only ones going through this, that it's never going to get better, that life is terrible, and we can't talk to anyone about it. It's too personal. It's too bizarre. We're going to look crazy. But the Bible's saying our family, other believers, are going through the same exact thing. So when you feel like, I'm crazy, I don't know where to turn, don't know what to do, it's saying, no, you're not. We're all going through it. And like I said, no one is talking about it. But find some peace and some comfort in knowing that you're not alone. So verse 10 says, In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you. And he will place you on firm foundation. He will restore, support, strengthen, and place you on a firm foundation after 
you have suffered a little while. I wonder why that is. I think it's because God wants to know that we're going to turn to Him. He will restore us. He'll strengthen us. And He will place us on a firm foundation. That is His promise to us. We would be crazy to believe that He wouldn't do that. You might be thinking, well, Leah, I've been having these thoughts for years and, and I don't know what to do. And, and oh my goodness, Leah, it's just crazy. Like, I think, I don't know where God is. I think He forgot about me. Faith. Faith is believing in the things that you can't see. Yeah, you might have dealt with this for years, but God is still real. And trust me, I have experienced anxiety for years. The moment I decided I wanted to become closer to God is the moment that I started dealing with anxiety. And it was severe. It was really bad. It's gotten better over the years, but I'm still working through it. And I'm still becoming free from it. And if I were to have given up, one year after, just because it was taking too long, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be here helping people. I wouldn't be here talking through these things and putting my experiences out there. But we have to have faith to know that God is going to bring us through. Faith is believing in what we can't see. Oh my gosh, life is crazy. That's based on what we can see. But we have to have faith in the things that we can't see. Because if we had faith in all that we could see, what would be the purpose of believing in God? We have to believe. Believe when it doesn't feel like it's happening. Believe when it doesn't look like it's happening. Believe when we can't see how it could happen. We have to believe that God is not going to forget about us because He loves us. And no matter how hard it is, what you're going through. God has not forgotten about you. He's going to pull you out on His perfect timing. He wants us to learn things. He wants us to learn how to depend on Him. And I'm telling y'all, it's hard, but there's a way and God is the way. I just want to encourage you to keep going. Anytime I've dealt with anxiety, it hasn't lasted forever. Anytime I've dealt with fear, it hasn't lasted forever. Thoughts go. They come. They go, but we have to be in alignment with God, who was our foundation, so that when the storms do come, we don't get knocked over and bent up out of shape because we can recognize it. Okay, you know, the Bible said that the enemy was going to attack me, and that's what's going on. You know, we can't entertain every thought the devil places in our minds, no matter how tempting it is. The Bible says, resist the enemy and he will flee. It doesn't say the enemy is not going to attack you. It says, resist the enemy and, he's gonna, and he will flee. So when the enemy comes and tells you, oh, you're not going to amount to anything. Oh, you're never going to be any, anyone. Oh, you'll never get married. You'll never meet anyone. You'll never have kids. Your life is going to be terrible. You kind of suck as a person and you really need to get in the gym. You need to do this, this, and this, and this, and that. If he attacks your identity. He attacks your purpose. He attacks your character. We have to know, okay, that's just the enemy doing his little thing. And we have to recognize what it is. And it's not, it's not easy. But that's the way to get past it. Just recognize it when the little thoughts trickle in. Okay, that's the enemy, but cast it to God. Don't entertain those thoughts. Don't entertain those thoughts. And it's hard, but we have to keep our mind on good things. So we cannot entertain negative thoughts from hell. Well, Leah, I feel like it's just my own thoughts. I mean, how do I know if it's, it's of God or if it's of me or if it's of the devil? Is it promoting fear, anxiety, hopelessness, loneliness, insecurity, doubt? That's from the devil. If it's promoting hope, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, self-control, faithfulness, patience, perseverance, it's from God. It's that simple. And we have to be able to categorize the two. So I just wanted to end with these two verses from Romans. And it's Romans chapter 8, verse 38 through 39. And it says, And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow. Not even the power of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate you from God, not even the devil himself. He can't do it. He will try. He will try. Take my word for it, but he cannot do it. We are children of God, and we will not be shaken. We will not live in fear. We will not live in anxiety. We will not live paralyzed 
in our minds because of the enemy. In Jesus' name, I just pray that over everybody. I pray that we will be free from these things. And we can be. And through Jesus, we can be. Not through ourselves. Not through reading a self-help book. But through Jesus Christ alone. Okay, one more verse. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 7, it says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. It's telling us what to do, guys. We are not helpless. It tells us what to do. And anyone who is dealing with anxiety or depression or sadness, I just pray that in Jesus' name you are healed. I pray that God comes to you and fills your spirit. I pray that the Holy Spirit guides you in the way to walk out of this. And I pray that in Jesus name that the devil is bound up out of you and cast it back into hell where he belongs because there's no room for fear, anxiety, worry, and doubt in the name of Jesus in any of us. I pray that in Jesus holy name. Amen. God is with you. God is for you. And if you are contemplating suicide or suicidal thoughts or anything of that nature I will leave um, a phone number down below for uh, like a number that you can call um, if you're dealing with depression and other than that I just thank you guys so much so much for watching this video this is something that is very dear to me and something that the enemy will tell me that I'm not able to talk about because it's something that I still experience to a degree um, I get very overwhelmed and sometimes I get very scared. So these are things that help me. And I just pray that this helps somebody out there who's watching this to know that you're not helpless. And that God is with you and God is for you. And I just thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please share this video with anyone that you think might benefit from it. And I just want y'all to know that God loves you. God is with you. He has not forgotten about you. And although it might not feel like it in the middle of an attack, God is right beside you, holding your hand, guiding you through it. So thank y'all so much for watching this video. And I will see y'all in my next one. Bye.